The FBI is upping its reward for information on the person responsible for planting explosives around the U.S. Capitol earlier this month. The agency is now offering $75,000 for information leading to arrest and conviction. The bombs were discovered near the Republican and Democratic National Committees during the Capitol riot on January 6th. CBS News senior investigative correspondent Catherine Herridge has been following this investigation, and she joins me now from our Washington bureau. Hi there, Catherine. So what information has the FBI gleaned from these pipe bombs, and what leads do they have? Well, Elaine, the pipe bombs are really important because of this critical timeline between 1245 and 115 on the day of the Capitol riots. 1245 is when this first pipe bomb was discovered near the RNC, and then just before 1 o'clock was when the first group started to breach onto the Capitol grounds. And then at 115, the second device was found at the DNC. Based on my reporting here at CBS News, these were viable devices, and investigators are exploring whether the individual or individuals who made these devices incorrectly set the kitchen timers on them or whether there was some malfunction with the power supply. And they also emphasized to me that these were not devices that needed professional or military training. The reason all of that matters is it goes to the larger question of a conspiracy. Were they designed to be sort of completely independent of what was happening on Capitol Hill that day? Or were they, in fact, designed to pull first responders away from the Capitol to further weaken security as these groups were breaching the security on the campus? Really disturbing to hear that mm. they were viable devices. That's Catherine. correct. Well, mm -hmm. how many people have been arrested in connection with the attack on the Capitol, and how many more are being investigated? Well, we're really talking about hundreds of individuals at this point, Elaine. What jumps out at me, based on my reporting, and I think it's the most significant development in recent days, is that the acting U.S. attorney here in Washington, Michael Sherwin, has brought the first conspiracy case. It's against a group of individuals, alleged members of the Oath Keepers. They're described by the FBI as a militia that believes the U.S. government is systematically stripping away the rights of individual citizens. And when you look at the affidavits in this particular case, what you see is significant evidence of coordination and also premeditation, that they were planning their trip to Washington, D.C., and then allegedly capitalized on the rally. And we saw that again in another case today out of Montana. This individual is accused of beginning their efforts back in December. So it shows a lot more about what, what the riots were on that day based on what we sort of saw unfold about two weeks ago. Well, the Biden administration confirms that FBI Director Chris Wray mm -hmm. will stay on. Mm -hmm. That uh, position has typically been um, less political uh, than it's become mm -hmm. in recent years. Mm -hmm. So how long is the FBI director's typical term, and why was there a question about whether Wray would actually continue in that position? Well, typically, the FBI director stays for 10 years. Um, we have Christopher Wray right now. Before that, it was James Comey, who was fired by President Trump. And then before that, it was Robert Mueller, who then went on to lead the special counsel Russia investigation. Robert Mueller was kind of an anomaly because he served, I think it was an additional two or three years at the request of President Obama to lead the FBI. Um, the reason it became so political, you know, in one word, is Russia and the investigation into the Trump campaign. President Trump made his frustration with FBI Director Ray very public through his Twitter account. There was a lot of indicators that he would fire him if he had won the election. And then, of course, we know what happened to James Comey. James Comey was fired in May of 2017, and President Trump at that tri time tried to argue that it was not about the Russia investigation. It was about other matters. Well, last night, the Senate mm -hmm. confirmed President Biden's pick for Director mm -hmm. of National Intelligence, Avril Haines. She's the first woman to mm -hmm. lead the U.S. intelligence community. Why was her confirmation briefly held up, mm -hmm. and by whom? Well, it was held up by Republicans uh, expressly because of an answer she gave over something called the CIA's Enhanced Interrogation Program. you got to dial back about 15 years 
to the Bush administration and these al-Qaeda suspects that were picked up overseas and taken to what were called black sites or secret prisons, and they were subjected to what critics call torture and what advocates called enhanced interrogation techniques that included waterboarding. The individuals we're talking about are people like Khali Sheikh Mohammed, who is the self-described architect of 9-11, Abd al-Nashri. He was the alleged architect of the attack on the USS Cole in 2000. That attack killed 17 sailors and was seen as the seminal event prior to 9-11. What Republicans wanted to know is whether Avril Haines was going to rip the scab off this wound and reopen investigations that could have a criminal implication for the CIA officers involved. And in a written response, she said that she had no intention to reopen what, in effect, had been a very significant wound for the CIA and the intelligence community right after 9-11. Yeah, I remember um, mm -hmm. when that story broke about those mm -hmm. um, enhanced in interrogation Correct. techniques. Mm -hmm. um, well, a few, a few days ago, Catherine, we spoke about the outgoing Trump administration's move to appoint Michael Ellis as mm -hmm. top lawyer of the NSA. Now he's been placed on administrative leave. What can you tell us about that? Well, we broke that story here at CBS News last night that Michael Ellis was placed on administrative leave by the head of the NSA so that the inspector general at the Defense Department, remember, NSA falls under the Defense Department, so that the inspector general could investigate whether his appointment to be the top lawyer was done in a proper fashion or whether, as Democrats, including the House Speaker and Adam Schiff, have alleged that there were irregularities. What we also learned in our reporting is that there's a separate and additional allegation that he mishandled classified information. People who support Ellis say that they really think that he is being targeted because he is someone who worked for President Trump. They say he has a good track record, that he has worked in a bipartisan fashion previously for the House Intelligence Committee, and they feel that he was targeted simply because of his uh, political associations. All right. I know you'll continue to watch it. Catherine Harris for us. Catherine, always great to have you. Thank you. Of course. Thank you.